Hello and welcome along to what is the final regular episode of this FM20 Builder Nation story, Climbing with Cliftonville with me, Daniel. The FM21 beta is upon us, our new long-term stories, our new live streams are coming. But today we finish off with one more trophy chance against our closest rivals, Larne, in the Northern Irish Cup final. After this episode, I'm going to retire off camera, leave people to it at Cliftonville for five years, and see just where the Northern Irish game stands without us. That episode will either be later today or tomorrow, depending on where the beta is. If that's not out yet, we'll do it tomorrow. So plenty to look forward to, plenty to get excited about, and plenty of interesting moments coming as well. The final five years in the future episode, the next one after this, will probably give us an indicator of how hard the Bangor City Challenge is going to be. Of course, we've put more restrictions on that to stop us getting to the top so easily and so quickly. But even then, I'm worrying about what's going to happen. Is the rest of the league going to follow once we get there? Is the league going to continue to improve or will it just dip and rise and dip and rise like a wave? But either way, Larn missing a few players today and that has to be the forefront of our attentions. So if you're looking forward to that, the final regular episode, please do put a thumbs up on the video. It's been an outstanding achievement. We'll have a look at our record after the match as hopefully we'll have wrapped up one more trophy before finishing off the series. So please do subscribe down below and turn on your notification bell. You'll get alerts as daily FM21 content releases, as well as every time we go live for our streams. And of course, you'll find out about the five years in the future one as well, which will round off our FM20 content on the channel. So there might be a little long weekend without action, depending on when the beta comes. But what won't be short of action is Cliftonville, because we've kept the transfer budget for the new manager, whoever it will be, We've strengthened the Irish League. We've agreed to sell Noah Daly to Larne for £100,000. He will go at the end of this season and strengthen them yet further. We've already talked about most of the ones coming into our club. And you can see there's no real change there. However, Finley Robertson has wrapped up another year extension to his loan. And he will be available for our new manager to choose from, whoever that may be. So plenty of positive signs. We've wrapped up loads of our key players on massive long contracts. So we've got Connor Crawford, Mark Lyons, Tom Lindley, four years each. Jake Kane, Jarvis, Sammy Wilson, who's improving, three years each. Nico Williams has got two more years. So has Calvin Falconer, who signed a new one. We're really trying to press this. We're trying to bed in youngsters. David Jarvis, Johnny Kennedy. They've both come out of the 18s this season. We're trying everything to make it as easy as possible. Lana signing big. We saw that in January. Two big players coming in who have been on loan for years. Everything looks positive. Branthwaite staying on loan next year. That's another one. A massive deal for the club. So I'm just hoping that all of those things combined means that the Irish League won't just go backwards again. But there's only one way of finding out, really. Let's go and have a look at our schedule to see how we've got on off camera. Loads of games we've played, obviously, since the League Cup final against this very same opponent. And we've won every single one, bar one, which was a little bit frustrating. So a 6-0 victory against Colrain, Branthwaite, a brace from Crawford and a hat-trick from Tom Lindley. A 2-0 win against Linfield, Doyle and Lindley with the goals there. A 6-0 win at Ards, Falconer and Lindley with a hat-trick apiece. You can certainly see the right wingers coming into form. And then he scored a brace again against Moyola Park in the Irish Cup quarters. Crawford got a hat-trick in that one. 5-0 against Bellina Millard in the final game before the league split. It wrapped up the title with five goals from Connor Crawford. He is just an absolute machine. 5-1 away at Limfield. Kane, Harwood, Bellis, Idart, Branthwaite and Faulkner. 4-2 in the Cup semi-final against Ballymena United. Traditionally the bogey side, not anymore. Connell, Falconer, Kane and Ida. A disappointing 0-0 draw against Glen Torren. Bar 2 or 3, it was the first 11. It was really disappointing. A 4-0 win at home to Colrain. Falconer with a brace, Connell and Crawford with one apiece. 5-1 away from home against Ballymena. Crawford with two, Connell, Williams and Falconer one apiece. And then a 3-1 win at home to Larn in the final game of the Premiership season. And after getting pegged back to one all via Connell's goal... It is Elliot and Doyle who wrapped up victory. So that leaves us top. We have flown to success this season. Oh, Crusaders lost the playoffs. Ards are staying up. But does that mean Crusaders didn't win the league? They were miles clear last time. Oh, they can't have bottled it again, surely. We win the league 108 points for the first ever time. Invincible. 
Three draws, the first two of the season and the final game towards the end against Glen Torren. But a 35 victories, 120 goal difference and a record for goals scored as well. But in the championship, it looks like Crusaders have bottled it. They have. Oh, they lost it on goal difference to Institute. And Crusaders stay down again. How on earth have they bottled it? I mean, the Cliftonville fans here are going to be delighted. But for the Irish game, we probably needed Crusaders in the top tier. Rivalries aside, it probably guarantees a bit more. Having one of those more reputable sides in. Especially instead of an Ards or a Carrick, for example. It is a bit of a concern. But we can't control that. And we'll keep an eye on it in the five years in the future episode. What that does leave us to do, though, is face Lan in this cup final. They're missing Stephen Thompson, who's injured again. They've got a long-term injury to Spencer Cook, the young midfielder. And Fanthorpe still out with that broken leg. They're really struggling with injuries there. 8,000 fans in at the Oval. An absolute sellout there. And we've gone for our strongest possible 18 to finish the season. No opportunities for youth today. We're going as strong as we can. Mark Lyons is wanted from Brentford. He's really improving still. I've put a seven and a half million asking price on him in the hope they'll stay when we resign and leave it to another manager. But I really worry there's going to be a mass exodus. I feel like that could happen. But our lineup for today, Bazuna in goal. Nico Williams back at right back, still improving as a real player. Harwood Bellis and Branthwaite with Lyons at left back. And then Doyle and Robertson in midfield. Jake Kane out with a knock, I'm afraid. Starting to struggle physically a little bit here. I wouldn't be shocked to see him go. Harvey Elliott and Cannell on the wings. Both will be here next season. And then Connor Crawford up front. What a superstar he is. Getting quicker. Getting better technically. Getting better off the ball. He's becoming a superstar. 35 league goals. Must be the top scorer. And he's alongside Calvin Faulkner. Who equally is improving very quickly. Both overtaken Oidar who's on the bench today. And if we go and have a quick look at the Dansky Bank Premiership. Connor Crawford is 14 clear of Faulkner and a couple of others as top scorer. So definitely a good season for him. And he's got a chance to get one more trophy this season. Connor Crawford comes up against Lahn. And we'll be back to see the first half in a moment. What do you think the score will be? Let me know down below. Well, it's this back three that Lahn seem to love. I'm not sure what they're going to do attacking wise. Parkhouse has dropped out today. But where does Noah Daly fit into that as a right winger? Don't know. But Kofi Bauman's back in. Former player Brad Lyons in central midfield. Mark Sykes having a wonderful spell in centre mid. He joined in the January. Ben Hall starts. Stephen Welsh on the bench. Why is he not starting games? I don't really understand. He was quite good for us. Ben Hall, I suppose he is a bit better. But let's go and get into the first half, shall we? We'll tell the lads to pick up where they left off. They beat Lahn in their very last league game of the season. And they need to follow it up in the Irish Cup final. 90 minutes from five trophies and a glorious finish. And with 15 on the clock, it's nil-nil, but Gavin Bazunu with a long kick. Crawford's going to get there as Baines misjudges the header. He's got two running up behind him. Crawford gets across him, but it's blocked as far as Doyle. And he picks it up again in the centre circle. White to Cannell on the left. Lyons is overlapping, but plays a 1-2 with Robertson instead. To Doyle. He's got man either side. He goes right to Nico Williams. He's got Elliot running off him, but wants to go alone. Crosses to Luca Cannell, and he hits the post. It drops down, and Ben Hall, our former centre-half, the Northern Irish international, is there to clear away. But it's a corner kick with Tommy Doyle. Into Cannell, off the line again. Same combination, off the post, and in clear by Ben Hall. This time, Sykes completes the clearance, but Robertson picks it up again. It's relentless pressure. Territory galore, and Crawford gets a snapshot in. Straight at the goalkeeper, though. And the offside flag was up anyway. 20 minutes, Lahn just about holding on. Well, this has been a disappointing first half. We've got a corner with Doyle and it suddenly isn't. Not 45 minutes up, we're into one minute of stoppage time. And Finley Robertson, a man who wouldn't even be starting if Jake Kane was fit, heads into the net after the keeper misjudges the cross. The best young goalkeeper in Northern Ireland, but he might have just cost Lahn his final. So we're going to tell the lads to keep it up, get into the second half. And we'd ideally like to put a bit of gloss on this because we haven't been particularly great. 1-0's the lead though, and that's all you need to win it. 25 minutes to go. Faulkner's looking complacent. He's not had a great game. And I know Idar's not first team anymore, but he's given such a contribution to this club, particularly in Europe, that I feel he deserves the run out. And I'm sure he might get a goal anyway. We'll give it five more minutes and then make the other two. I'm not sure who else to bring on, but so far, we're doing the job. For all that we've said about not being great, Lahn haven't had a chance really. And we've now got a free kick 25 to 30 yards out. 
Probably near a 30 in truth. Crawford will take. Oh, it's a great curling effort. Brilliant save by the goalkeeper. And Sykes will chase it as they try to counter down the left. But Tommy Doyle mops that up instantly. Harvey Elliott will be replaced. Tom Lindley on for him. He's a young player who's improving dramatically. And we'll give it five more. And then maybe Sammy Wilson. He's someone who deserves a chance, I feel. Ten minutes to go. And we've got one more youngster on the bench. But we've got to throw first with Mark Lyons. We'll make an easier decision if we score from this. Adam Idar cuts in from the left. No real football for a few months. But his cross is blocked. It falls for Lindley. And he hits the post again. And Ben Hall clears again. How many times are we going to see that combination? As Mark Lyons throws in to Finley Robertson. The goal scorer, the match winner at the moment. Again, not one who's had much football. But that's a delicious delivery. Oh, what a curling ball in that was. Lindley made the run and at the back post, two yards out. He is there to volley it in, just beating the on-rushing keeper. Beautiful ball from Robertson. It means Tommy Doyle can come off and on will be the man himself, Sammy Wilson. The youngsters improved so much this year and he deserves his cup final appearance. But 10 minutes to go, Cliftonville 2, Larn 0 and the substitute Tom Lindley has wrapped up the final. We mentioned his goal scoring form beforehand. He was scoring galore around March and the start of April. And now into May, he's added another. But Lana through here. David Parkhouse off the bench and just over the bar. The first attacking highlight we've seen for Lan. And that, we were split open far too easily. I know there's tired legs with Nico Williams, with Harwood Bellis. But it's still a good performance. The final outing for the red and white suit. The final trophy lift under my management for Gavin Bazunu. And Cliftonville have made it five this season. A clean sweep domestically yet again. And a fantastic achievement to go out on. We're going to go and have a look at this squad. We're going to go and have a look at our Hall of Fame quickly as well. And then we will be leaving Cliftonville. And seeing what the Irish Football League looks like in five years time. A fantastic way to finish though. I'm so glad we won that. Let's get through the messages quickly. Five trophies. A bit more money coming in. And plenty of praise across the board. But let's go to this squad screen. Because this is the important one. If we get them in order of selection info. We'll go through appearances this season. Gavin Bazunu, Tommy Doyle, 55 apiece. 60 for Crawford. 57 for Lyons after that early season wobble where he was dropped because he was unhappy. Loads of others in the 40s. Falconer's got 58. The only reason he's lower is because he's made lots of sub appearances. The same for Tom Lindley, actually. He's made 58 as well. 47 for Sammy Wilson, largely off the bench. We're starting to blood some of these youngsters. 21 for Jarvis. A couple for Kennedy. Oh, it's brilliant to see. It's really good to see. Kennedy, just so you can see him there. Only one star ability, two potential. But he's got versatility. He's got talent. And I think he might be better than they say. At 17 anyway, he's going to be a superstar. David Jarvis, still improving massively the left back. Will be back up next year when Sirkin leaves. Unless he's replaced by uh, the new manager, of course. Noah Daly's on his way. So that frees the path for Lindley and for Kennedy. I'm just really pleased with how things are going. Off the pitch, Carrie Cathcart, a massive contribution, despite not playing much on it. And in terms of goals, there's only one place to start. 56 goals for Connor Crawford. 35 in the league, 11 in the Champions League. An incredible achievement. 28 for Falconer, 34 for Adam Idar at nearly one a game. 24 for Lindley, 19 Doyle, 12 Connell, 10 Elliott. Oh, there's so much talent in this side. So much talent. Even Lavery got eight, and I mean, he barely played. Nico Williams, seven, including a dramatic hat-trick earlier in the season. And in terms of assists, there's so many brilliant ones. Both starting central midfielders, Kane and Doyle, with over 20 assists. Elliot Williams, Crawford, McCarron, he barely played as well due to injury. Lyons, Cannell and Idar, all in double figures. And not far behind are Lindley, Faulkner and Robertson, the hero of the cup final. Average rating, Tommy Doyle, almost an eight. One of the only two we've not secured for next season is such a shame as well. Because he was going to be an absolute superstar for this club. But it's not going to be. Jake Kane, Nico Williams and Connor Crawford the next three. All of whom are here on permanent deals. And then some of the lone stars we're keeping next year. Harvey Elliott and Jarrod Branthwaite. Below a seven in terms of rating. Just the two goalkeepers. David Jarvis and Johnny Kennedy who largely came off the bench. It has been a wonderful season. And everything's worth celebrating at Cliftonville. So let's go and finish our time at the club by having a look at our success rate. So if we go to our history, we can see all of our stats for this career. 
So 1,783 days in charge. Total career earnings still under 300,000. We're only just getting over a grand a week now. No days on holiday, we have been dedicated. And the highest fee spent was pre-agreeing Nico Williams for this summer. Matthew Smith went for 2 million, of course. He's at Burnley as a backup player in the championship. Paid to agents, 70 grand. Value of sales, 5 million pound. 36 players out, 45 in. And I think it's fair to say that they are pretty good turnaround numbers. Under 200,000 spent, £5 million bought in in its place. Wonderful business, wonderful signings, an incredible job done at Cliftonville. We're third in the highest nation hall of fame because we've won so many trophies. And in our 333 games in charge, we were just 13 away from 1,000 goals. Conceded less than one a game, a goal difference of nearly 700 in five years. We've won 260, drawn just 37, lost just 36, which considering the Champions League group stage games as well is incredible. 14 cups, four league titles. Just that first season we struggled really. But once we got to the party in the second year, the progress was quick, it was swift and it was excellent. So a wonderful time in charge. I have loved this series. I can't thank you enough for coming and joining me. I can't thank you enough for the positive feedback on it as well. It's obviously inspired the Bangor City save for FM21. And there is a vote for a Northern Irish save in the live stream. So if you haven't had your say yet, you can do that over on the community page. We'll have one more episode from this series, which will be the five years look in the future. To see just how quickly this side and this progress gets dismantled. Well, touch wood, fingers crossed, it might not. But if you did enjoy this one, that final cup victory, please do put a thumbs up on the video. You can see there the five trophies won, four cups and the Danske Bank Premiership. Subscribe to the channel for daily FM21 content from both of my long-term stories every day at 4.30 as soon as the beta's released. We'll also have live streams nearly every day during the next two weeks until the weekly live streams continue once the full game's released. And as I said a moment ago, you can vote for who that will be with over on the YouTube community page. Don't forget down in the description you can find the links to my Twitter and Discord page and over on the podcast channel I've just done a solo vlog as I was able to luckily go and watch live EFL football just before the lockdown. So check that one out in the eye above. It really was a brilliant moment for me to go to watch football again. Certainly at professional level anyway and just in time before the lockdown. But a massive thank you for watching this, for your incredible support with the series. And I hope to see you next time for five years look in the future before FM21 is live on the channel. See you there.